Mothcast. Um, as always, I'm Bruce. Um, this is Luca, and we are joined by Kyle Stoneham. So, Kyle, w- what brings you to Sydney? Uh, well, having a bit of a vacation, really, after the Moth Worlds. Uh, come over to stay with some friends, my wife as well, and we're just yeah, chilling out in Sydney, experiencing all the good bits, which there's a lot of. Um, yeah, it's tra- chatting moths already again. So we thought we'd just take this opportunity because Kyle was in the boat park, um, yeah, hanging out at Yeah, pretty random, it wasn't planned. And we thought we'd have a chat about all the stuff we don't normally get to talk about. So, of the three of us, as I understand, you're the only one that may have sailed Mr. Slingsby's World Championship winning Exocet. Yeah, that's true. I did. I was lucky enough to take it out for a spin the other day. And here. And is, it all, is it all boat or all Tom? Fill us in. Give us the inside run. <laughs> well, um... The boat's pretty good. The boat's pretty good, but I'm, yeah, I think Tom also has something to do with it. To do with it, yeah. Um, yeah, it's really locked in the boat. Nice. I just copied all these settings, pulled it onto the lines that he was using, um, and even in considerably busy harbour, uh, ferries going everywhere, a lot of confused chop. The boat was just you know, planted and a lot of fun stuff. So, because you had an exit, exit before your rocket. Yes, um, I did. So, how how does it compare? Like, what's What's the main difference? When you say planted, you're talking about... It just felt really solid, yeah. um, very stiff. It's, it's obviously been set up well. Um, all the rope work was good. Um, everything seemed to be you know, in exactly the right position. And the rig, the rig was uh, pretty dynamic and just easy to control. Um, I can't remember that much about my X set now, thinking about it, because I've got used to the other boat, which is quite different yeah. but then when I jumped on this it didn't take long to get the hang of it right. which is which I can't say the same for the rocket when I first jumped onto that it did feel very different um, yeah I'd, I'd say it's uh, an easy boat to sail which which probably helps a lot yeah. when you got to get your head out of the boat okay so what do you sail normally I have a hard wing rocket now oh one of those solid boats yeah, one of those yeah, boats solid, state. solid. Um, solid wings and I think it's fast I think it's got um, a lot of potential for straight line speed especially upwind and I have felt some of that pace and it is you know, fast compared to the base around quite difficult to find the groove yeah um, I think Dylan's probably the only one who's consistently finding that groove um, I know that I have the similar pace when I can get into it but it's just yeah trying to isolate some of those variables. So let's sort of go into this a little bit. So for those not familiar with the, the rocket, the rocket SSD, it's built um, SSD, solid state drive is the IT term, but what does the SSD stand for? I haven't had time to find out. Okay. I've just been trying to get, get so it anyway, so the, so, the, so the rocket SSD is it's a solid wing boat as opposed to the Mark II or the Exocet, which traditionally have soft wings on and tramps on their boats. Um, and I suppose the reason why I say one of those boats is because uh, one thing that we enjoy about moths is that they pack down to a very small volume for shipping. And I think the, the Mansa moth and the Rocket SSD, they have to go full size um, when, when they're being shipped. Yeah, it doesn't come apart. If you're using the shipping container, it actually doesn't take up any more space than an Exocet box, for example, because you can only go three high with boxes. Yep. And I think three across or four across. Uh, you take out a middle box and it will sit in the void that is left in the top of the container. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's different probably if you have a full container of them, yeah, but yeah. if you mainly have box boats, they, they do just fit in. Yeah. And some of the, you know, we saw some of the boats coming back into Sydney from Perth. Um, I think four or five of them weren't de-winged anyway. Yeah. So actually they could have all been hard wing boats and it would have made no difference. Well, my, well, my monster doesn't pack up into a box either because it's got a massive front wing frame. Yeah. Um, so it won't fit anyway. So I think that's probably some of the, the the main difference. And my real question is, do you feel that the there is a gain in those solid wings? I think so. Um, I think there's an aerodynamics gain, especially for upwind. We were seeing now that the at the world's the trend was fairings on the, the soft tramp boats. Yep. Um, and they're trying to get the trailing the trailing edge of the wings at the back pointed to have better release. Um, all things that when you look at the hardening boats they're kind of already done um, probably you get a little bit more energy into the rig and into the foils than you do on the you know the wings that slot together because it is solid yep yep um, are they heavier probably ever so slightly 
um, just because there is more carbon. But you don't have to replace the trampoline, so I suppose there's a bit of a save not having to take those off, not having the chance of tearing the trampoline, which can put you back. Yep. Um, but I think the potential upwind performance is slightly higher than a soft wing boat with you know all the modifications that they're putting on to try and make it look like hard wing boat. So one of the first things that I noticed when I walked up to your bikes was, was how high the wind bars were, because they were you know substantially higher than even you know the Exocet high ones. So w what's it like to sail with that? Um, yeah, they're quite radically high. Yeah. So obviously with chasing maximum right at the moment, um, pushing, I think pushing the limits on how high you can go. It's it's like climbing a wall when you when you tack really, because so you get in the lean, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So. The windward hill is kind of almost parallel with the water. Yeah. The leeward wing is quite high. You can't see below the boom and over the wing yeah. because it's, it's it overlaps high. when yeah. you have the controls on. So um, yeah, definitely more difficult to maneuver the boat. Once you're hiking, you're locked in, I think it's quite ergonomic, pretty comfortable. Yeah. Um, not as easy to sail, I must say, as my previous Exocet, which had the normal height wings yeah. and even Tom's one with the, the high wings. Yeah. Um, it, it's definitely you know another 40 or 50 mil higher. It's, you do notice it yeah. in manoeuvres. I find jibing the most difficult, where you're trying to keep the platform relatively level and you've got to come in, get underneath the boom, and then back out on the other wing before you can really have any control. Otherwise, you're just in no man's land yeah. and you can get pinned by the boom. Um, so you all of a sudden have a lot of writing moment on when you're in that sort right. of zone with not much healing moment. Yeah. And yeah, if you get a heel wrong, the, the foils will let go. And as I proved time and time again in the uh, Perth, it's, it's quite easy to capsize. <laughs> yeah. So Carl, you talked about having that small sweet spot and not and having not hitting it, you know, only getting into it sometimes. Do you want to expand on what you were talking about? There? Yeah, um, I think if you, to get the rig flowing exactly right, you just got to get the controls kind of spot on. Um, and as you accelerate, obviously, the, apparent wind changes increases yep. quite a lot and you need to trim the rig for that so it's just having a kind of an easy spot for the controls where you can go through most of the wind range where ultimately if you pull on everything a little bit harder when you're ripping you will be faster yep. but as soon as you come out of that speed it just doesn't work and then it falls on top of you um, the windward hill as well is quite important so getting trying to get the right amount and one of the difficulties I've sort of experience I'm getting better at is just setting that heel angle because everything's curved on the boat so trying to get a reference where you look when everything's curved <laughs> there's not really anything you can line up so I could probably do a go into Bunnings and uh, get in a spirit level and just sort of yeah. having something straight on the boat um, but you just kind of get in the hang of it I think the sweet spot is about you know 26 to 28 degrees of windward hill yep. and if you can get it locked into that it does just rip and I think that's when Possibly we get some flow attaching on the lured wing and just reducing that drag further. And that's when it really starts to rip and go high. And when you can get it in that spot, it's, it's nice. If you have turbulence, if you have a bad sight, for example, and you're trying to get through other boats, you can't really extract that performance until you've got, well, until you've tacked and made a lane. The world's in Perth. Was that the first time you'd actually laid eyes on the beaker? And what yeah, thoughts on the yes, beaker? it was, yeah. What are your thoughts on the beaker? Is that... Well, um, it's, it's an interesting concept, I like it. I can see it's very practical, the way it comes apart and goes back together. And I think for building boats, it's it's a good idea. Um, they seem to go very fast. Um, I think less is more on the aero type of thing with them. They've just, instead of putting bearings and stuff, they've just reduced everything as much as possible, which means any time that they're, you know, the wings aren't flowing, they're creating much less drag than all the boats that have bigger wings when they're not. Yeah. So their potential, do I think the rocket has more potential? Probably. Could many people extract that potential? Probably not. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. It's just it's theory or bullshit, as you <laughs> like to call it. So uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's sort of my feelings, really. The next worlds are in Weymouth. Yes. Um, in 2020. Yeah, in September this year. So we're what, nine months away. Yep. The, in fact, in nine months' time, we'll be. I think first day of qualifying for the Worlds in Weymouth, um, which for those of you that don't know, it's the venue for the 2012 Olympics, the sailing venue. So we'll be sailing out of the academy, which has 
well, it's perfectly built for not just sailing but moth sailing as well. Um, plenty of space for setting up. Um, great launch facilities, and we have a sheltered harbour um, as well as going outside the harbour in the bay, um, providing the obviously the breeze and the conditions are right. So yeah, it should be. It's got the makings of a very good moth venue. Is there any restriction on the number of boats because it is such a small harbour and such a small venue? Um, at the moment, no. Um, I wouldn't say it's such a small harbour. Um, we have had. Well, Some we good. are sitting next to the glorious <laughs> Sydney Harbour. Yeah, we are. There's definitely less traffic and sharks in Weymouth Harbour. <laughs> Although we do have dolphins. Um, no ferries. No, well, <laughs> hopefully not on the days of racing. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a perfect size for moth sailing, actually, yeah, yeah. for one course, really, inside the harbour. We just recently had our nationals there exactly a year before the Worlds to, as a kind of pre-test event. We got every race in over the four days and um, there's 75 boats, which was a restricted entry, but that's not due to the sailing area, that was due to the sailing club that we sailed out of, which wasn't the academy. It's somewhere with, um, you know, it's a sailing club with a lot less space for moss to roll over and put foils in. Yep. Um, that was a huge success, that event, and every event that we've had there always is. So to be at the academy just opens up for more boats. Will there be a restriction? Um, there's always a maximum number of boats you can have at any event. It's just what is that number? So at the moment there isn't a restriction in place, but it is something that needs to be discussed and more importantly how that number is allocated yeah. to each country to make it fair. So you can still go Luke. I can still go, yeah. yeah it's, it's good. It's if it's you <laughs> qualify. <laughs> yeah, gonna qualify. Um, so what's your involvement with the association at, 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 at the local level? I mean, are you organising... Uh, so I'm chairman of the UK class. Um, and a year ago, or I've been... How long have I been chairman? Maybe one or two years. Um, previous to that, I was just organising um, events and sponsorship. So putting those together, and it was like, right, we could do the UK world. So I put a bid in for the worlds, which I think it's the same year, about four or five countries also put a bid in. So we were lucky enough to win it, um, and I think you end up inheriting the responsibility of of organising the event if you happen to put the bid in that, that wins. Yep. Yeah. So that's brought me to where I am really. Um, we're just at the point of forming a committee and dishing out the roles so that people know exactly what they're going to be doing, um, and yeah, advertising it and building the event. Oh well, if you want a commentary team, I know a couple of people. <laughs> yeah, it depends if they're competing or not. But, um, so, you know, I'm, I'm sure people are dying to find out they haven't sailed at Weymouth before. Um, what kind of conditions would you expect? You know, Perth is obviously quite a windy way going, and that's typically what, what Perth gets. Um, how, how's Weymouth going to be? Well, what I would say about moth events is, and I've said it before, you, you never get the conditions that the venue is renowned for. Yeah. Um, and I think wait, that the same could be said for Perth as well. When we were warming up and we were training, it was pretty windy and then when it came to the event especially on the blue course um there was no any of the same breeze yeah. uh, as has been experienced yeah. um and even on the last day in gold fleet as well very light across the course yep uh, and possibly the first day at gold fleet it wasn't yeah. really honking yeah. so what can we expect at weymouth well generally a bit of everything so that means probably just one type of sailing but yeah it, it could be anything we had in our nationals quite light stuff um, on one day where it's peaking at around sort of 10 or 11 knots um, and then we also had days where it was yeah, you're fully sending it right. and it's on. a flat water I mean I guess when it's when it's like that we'll be inside the harbour um, is that relatively flat or you know well inside the harbour depends on the direction of the breeze inside the harbour it is quite flat but then when you get down towards the wall you do get the residual shot so it bounces off Bouncing the wall and back. comes back. Yeah. yeah, and that would tend to be if it's a uh, southwesterly or a westerly and you're looking for the biggest course possible, it's more where the start line is and the little marks, um, which we did kind of experience in Perth as well on one of the courses where you just, you're quite tucked in to give you the maximum racetrack. Um, if you go outside the harbour, providing the breeze isn't too strong and it's not blowing straight into the, into the corner, yep. then you can set a big, good course as well yep. the the waves are more rollery not as, as short and steep as they would nice. be in the harbour it's more swell not chop 
Yeah, but it's still fairly sheltered and it's quite saleable. We we stick our heads out there and go sailing if we've got some sort of cover and it's, yeah. it's a pleasant place to go out. Okay. Cool. All right, I think we'll call it there. Thanks, Carl. Enjoy the rest of your trip. Thanks, Carl. Thank you. Thanks for visiting us. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> See ya.